Enantiomers and diastereomers are both types of stereoisomers, which means molecules that are enantiomers and molecules that are diastereomers will have the same chemical formula, the same connectivity, but be non-superimposable. Now, enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror images, whereas diastereomers are not mirror images. And that's the difference. Let's look at some details. Cis-trans stereoisomers are diastereomers. Right here is trans-2-butene and cis-2-butene. They have the same chemical formula, C4H8. And they both have a methyl group connected to a double bonded carbon connected to another double bonded carbon connected to a methyl group. And yet they are non superimposable. They are also not mirror images. You can also have cis trans stereoisomers in rotation restricted systems like a ring, cyclohexane. Right? The reason that you have cis trans in the alkene is because of the rotation restriction having to do with the double bond, but rings also give rotation restriction. So, this molecule is cis because both methyl groups are pointing up, and this molecule on the right is trans because one methyl group is pointing up and one methyl group is pointing down. So these are diastereomers. But each molecule also contains two chirality centers. Then it's useful to draw them as wedge dash structures. Here's the cis with both of my methyl groups going up and here is the trans with the methyl group in the more counterclockwise position going down that's this one, and the clockwise methyl group going up. So now we can see that in a pair of diastereomers, one of the chirality centers is reversed, but the other one is the same. If both were reversed, they would be enantiomers, but since only one is reversed, they are diastereomers. Incidentally, let's name these molecules using R and S. Since we'll need to prioritize groups, it's always good to draw in the implied hydrogens. That means that this is the highest priority, then this, then this. So ABC is clockwise with the lowest priority group on the dash. That means this top chirality center in the molecule on the left is R. Going for the bottom one, we've got A, B, C, counterclockwise, so it's S. For the top chirality center for the molecule on the right, we've got A, B, C, clockwise, but the lowest priority group is on a wedge, which means it's S. And the bottom chirality center, A, B, C, D, counterclockwise with the lowest priority group on a dash is S. So if we take this carbon as number one and this carbon as number two, then we've got 1R2S, 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane for the molecule on the left and 1S2S, 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane for the molecule on the right. So we can see that this pair of molecules is a pair of diastereomers because they differ in one chirality center, but not both. And this also means that there is another diastereomer of this molecule. What if we kept the second chirality center 
Or rather, rather, what if we kept the first chirality center the same but switched the second chirality center? So we'd keep carbon number 1 at R, and then we'd change carbon number 2 to R to make the other diastereomer. mirror. It would be 1R, 2R, 1, 2, then methylcyclohexane. How to draw this? Well, our original molecule was up on carbon 1 and up on carbon 2. So, to change carbon 2, we make it down. So once again, drawing in the implied hydrogen, that's group T. Priority A, because it has the methyl group, right? This is a tertiary carbon, whereas this is a secondary carbon, so it's B. And the methyl group is a primary carbon, so it's C. And we're clockwise with our lowest priority group on the dash once again, so it's R. When we prioritize the groups on carbon 2, carbon 1 is priority A, carbon 3 is priority B, and the methyl group is priority C. The hydrogen is D, counterclockwise with the hydrogen on the wedge. So that, once again, is R. So just to recap, the first two molecules have one of their two chirality centers inverted. So they are a pair of diastereomers. as is this pair of molecules. One, but not both, a pair of diastereomers. Whereas the relationship between these two, they have both chirality centers inverted. This is a pair of enantiomers. Does that mean that if we made 1s2r, it would be the enantiomer of the 1r2s? Let's try it. So here's the 1s2r. We've inverted both chirality centers. Now, this should be a pair of enantiomers, right? Actually, wrong, because this molecule has a plane of symmetry. So, this cis 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane is too high symmetry to be chiral. In fact, it's what you call a meso molecule because it's got a plane of symmetry. Right here is your mirror plane. And if you reflect the molecule through that mirror plane, you get the identical image. And you can also see this if instead of numbering clockwise, 1, 2, we numbered counterclockwise, 1, 2, well then, Look what we'd get. For carbon number one, this would be priority A, this would be B, and this would be C. Oh, and let's not forget our implied hydrogen. So we would be counterclockwise with the hydrogen on the wedge, which would make the designation of this carbon R. And then we go A, B, C. And of course, we need our implied hydrogen. That's priority D. So we'd have clockwise with the hydrogen on the wedge, which would be S. But wait a minute. That's the same as the designation of our original molecule, 1R2S. Well, it turns out they're the same, because if you took a spatula 
and you stuck it under the molecule from the side and flipped it vertical, you'd end up with this image right here. Right, so we stick our spatula in there and we flip it over 180 degrees. And both of these methyl groups that were pointing away from us are now pointing toward us. So, this molecule is meso. This is when you have an even number of chirality centers and a high degree of symmetry in the molecule, so that the molecule overall is not chiral, despite having multiple chirality centers. Typically, you'll see um, molecules are meso when they have a mirror plane or an inversion point. If they have a rotational axis of symmetry, that is probably not meso. If n is the number of chirality centers in a molecule, then the molecule has 2 to the n conformations. Each conformation has exactly one enantiomer and 2 to the n minus 1 diastereomers. Consider this molecule. I've intentionally broken the symmetry by putting in a hydroxyl group instead of a methyl group. But here, are all of my chirality centers are on wedges. Now, the enantiomer we draw just by putting everything on dashes. Right, so these are enantiomers. How many total conformations should there be here? Well, there are three chirality centers. So that means there are two to the third or eight total stereoisomers. That means there are six others that are missing and they will all be diastereomers of both of these molecules. But they'll all be in three sets of two, where they're enantiomers of each other. Pause and draw the other six. When you've got your six diastereomers drawn, then resume to check. Also, classify them as being enantiomers of each other. So I'm starting out with the leftmost chirality center and switching it from a wedge to a dash. Now the enantiomer of this will be wedge dash dash. So there's one pair of enantiomers. Both of those are diastereomers of the initial two. Now let's go to the middle chirality center. So now instead of going wedge, 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 I've gone wedge, dash, wedge. The enantiomer of this one will be dash, wedge, dash. And there it is. One more set to draw, and that'll be inverting the hydroxyl group from the original. So there's my final pair of enantiomers, wedge, wedge, dash, and dash, dash, wedge. So that's a total of eight, right? And if you draw a box around each one for each pair, 
The stuff that's within the box is the enantiomer of each other. And stuff that's in different boxes are diastereomers.